very warm welcome in this class and as we start today the best instructional design for digital age let me tell you that last time we have talked about what is the Bloom's taxonomy for learning this is very important to know that how a teacher can plan a lesson while planning a lesson what important things teacher should keep in mind no matter what method we use to teach in class it is essential that we plan our lessons so that we may obtain our objectives which has been set prior to the teaching of that content and in this context we discussed Bloom's evaluation approach which is about writing objectives in behavioral terms so that those changes can be observed in students and in that context only today we are going to discuss about traditional way of teaching which has been there for a long long time and we will also think why the traditional method is good or serves the purpose in this age or to what extent it serves our purpose and how does it help the learners to learn in the class now for a long time if we consider here the traditional teaching is considered or the learning is considered to be the best way of teaching learning process where students normally learn with the instructor led approach or in the environment where instructor addresses the learning requirement of the learners face to face traditional learning also has both advantages and disadvantages and some of these we are going to discuss today now let us consider some of uh, the advantages of traditional classroom here you can see the first advantage is that of structure yes this is very true it is the biggest advantage in traditional classroom teaching because traditional classroom is most accepted form of learning and it takes place in a very organized and formal environment there is a set timetable for everything all the subjects get equal importance allowing all-round development of the learners personality it takes place in the four wall of schools and everything is organized in the timetable there is time for uh, you can uh, say each and every subject time for co-curricular activities, time for some other interaction, time for craft. So we have a very well organized structure in traditional classroom teaching and learning. Second, we have academic interaction. Teaching in a classroom gives students the opportunity to get engaged in live discussions, encouraging them to use critical thinking skills, formulate opinions or arguments which can provide them immediate feedback. Students can ask questions right away to clear their apprehensions regarding a topic presented in a class by freely interacting with the teacher, expert or the resource person and with the other classmates helping them expand their horizons for learning. Now the third very important example or the advantage which we need to talk about is collaborative learning. These days we emphasize on collaborative learning. Interactive classroom environment promote and stimulate which is called collaborative learning. A dynamic of collaborative learning which encourages learners to learn in groups and enhances students critical thinking skills as well there is lots of social interaction along with academic interaction a traditional classroom teaching helps students 
to interact with and to learn from other children with similarities and differences in many different ways. Meeting students of different countries and different cultures allows students to broaden their horizons and expand their minds in accepting unity and diversity. In a traditional classroom, young children learn how to socialize and develop social skills that are very important to adjust in the world outside the school. Interaction with the students of different languages helps students learn better communication skills, leading them towards better writing and speaking skills, which are difficult to achieve in a virtual classroom setting. Now, the last on this slide is social development. In a traditional classroom, students experience social interaction with peers and establish rapport with teachers, helping them develop socially. Classroom teaching environment helps students figure out how to resolve conflicts, work in teams, get along with the students of different cultural backgrounds and present their opinion and views in front of peers, respecting individual differences. Classroom environments also help learners to grow physically, socially, and emotionally in a very natural manner. Now, it is planned teaching learning. Well-planned teaching in a classroom environment opens up opportunities for teachers to do justice with their lesson plans. Well-prepared teacher can keep children stimulated and interactive by making class interesting, informative and enriching for the students. Well-planned home assignments help students to learn independently. Good classroom teaching, you know, can also accommodate different types of learners. I'm talking about individual differences. I'm also talking about those who are challenged in any way, whether they have some visual problems or hearing problems or any other sort of problems. If our teaching is planned, if our lesson planning is perfect, we can cater to the different individual differences in the class. And then we also have one of the greatest advantages, that is organization. In traditional classroom setting, students learn to develop organization skills, being with the beginning with the basics such as arriving to school on time, being punctual and disciplined, completing classroom activities and assignments, class projects, craft work and other activities what you always have been doing as an integral part of your class definitely develops creativity in you and it develop you as an entire all-round personality the various academic and co-curricular activities that takes place in the school all together teaches students to organize their time prioritize their assignments complete their homework and gives gives an opportunity to sharpen their creative skills also now last on this series is fewer technology requirements you know why many people why many students and teachers have a sort of resistance against accepting proper uh, technology because it is difficult to learn and to start with you need to have lots of information about softwares and hardware of technology and you need to really put in efforts this way traditional classroom teaching is praised a lot and that is why we advocate no that it is the traditional classroom teaching only which can get going there are fewer technology requirements Many students do not have access to technology, many do not know computers, many do not have a connection of internet, which is the basic requirement in e-learning or blended learning environment. Whereas in traditional classroom, students do not need to have access to any such thing. The lack of digital technology would not be an obstacle to hinder their education as it would have been in e-learning environment or in a blended learning method. So these were the advantages which we had here and now I come to the disadvantages what are the disadvantages of traditional classroom teaching. First of all that of structure. The traditional classroom comprises of 
more than 30 or 40 learners all roughly of the same age listening repeatedly to the instructor or teacher making it impossible for a teacher to cater to the individual differences in a huge huge class it is also not possible for a teacher to adapt to new styles of teaching or to make his teaching interacts interesting by using various methods due to very big number of students due to which lecture method is used as most common method which have been doing since ages and we teach by lecture method which makes class monotonous and boring and cause frustration in students and often display many behavioral problems in the classroom which you and i have equally experienced what happens in a traditional classroom and when we only adapt lecture method the traditional classroom environment works well for a large number of children but there are many others who simply have difficulty learning in this environment interacting with peers that are strictly in their age range or who require more one-to-one -one attention and time to grasp certain concept definitely teacher cannot cater to individual differences in limited time then we can also talk about uh, the second disadvantage which lacks student focused learning a drawback of traditional teaching is that it inherently concentrates on standards, curriculum, and passing of exams. If I ask you, why do you study? Why do you go to school? Your answer will be, definite, of course, to pass exam, which are in opposition with student-focused learning. Student-focused learning places value on the students and builds the curriculum around the questions young people need to be answered in order to understand the teaching content. Traditional learning is based on repetition and memorization of facts which do not promote learning in a true sense because teacher is always in haste to complete the lesson, the syllabus and this is what hampers true and focused learning. Then next we have its lax emphasis on critical thinking. Now can you think how it lacks emphasis on critical thinking? Yes, age old history of traditional classroom learning emphasizes the fact that it concentrates only on supplying ready made tidbits of knowledge. Encouraging, cramming, rote memorization as I said in students and discourage critical thinking we do not allow student to use his brain but we believe in giving him the the ready-made uh, things we believe in spoon feeding and we want him to produce the same the ability to actively apply information gained through experience and reasoning among them are suppressed it also deprives learners from deeper learning of understanding required to understand complex concepts and lifelong learning rather it nourishes only the cognitive domain where as effective and psychomotor domains of learning are left malnourished which have been doing in bloom's taxonomy why we usually plan our objectives according to bloom is because we can target cognitive affective and psychomotor domain which definitely are not achieved in traditional way of teaching learning it emphasizes the role of teacher as knowledge dispensers and student as repositories it lacks process oriented learning yes traditional classroom learning emphasizes as i told you emphasizes on passing tests passing exams getting degrees whether or not the student understand the concept what is his depth of understanding is ignored. The learning process is thus devalued and the student fails to understand the method, techniques and skills required to learn. There is it lacks emphasis on additional learning also. Rather than focusing on larger concepts, traditional training focuses on basic skills taught within the four walls of the classroom. While this simplifies learning, it provides 
limited knowledge and understanding of the subject which hampers the all-round development of a learner then it lacks interactivity traditional training emphasizes on individuals students performance in the class or in exams and it fails to prepare student for future endeavors where they are likely to work in teams and require collaborating with their colleagues and you know what um, else limited by space and time Traditional classroom teaching requires a brick and mortar building and has a stringent timetable to be strictly followed by the learners. When you are not in time in the class, you too get scolding. Your teacher scolds you. Okay? And if you cannot make it, you have to miss the class. So there is a very tight schedule to be followed and that is why we say that is limited by space and time. You have to have a very good infrastructure in order to have a traditional class. Whereas we will see that when we talk about the other methods of learning, maybe this infrastructure is not allowed. But like you and me, we sit at home and we talk, we interact.